We are five seconds into live, boys. Can you hear me? I can hear yep. you. You can. I can hear you. That's all great. All good. So now we have to do the thing. We're going to talk about who we are and how we got here and what we're still doing here after at least 70 years, each of us. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm Mike to my right on your screen. That's there. That's Brian. And to his, his, the right, the keep going right. That's actually what Steve looks like. You're going to have to take our word for it because he doesn't have a camera yet, but he pledged actual, that he would, what's that? actual picture of me. Yes. He, he pledged that he would produce content um, for us here. And uh, that's the first thing. He, I, so I asked him to draw his portrait with um, MS Paint. So that's that. So to get us started, I mean, the, the impetus for this, and you guys are free to jump in whenever you'd like. Uh, the, the impetus for this was we, um, we, we've all been friends for a million years, and we wanted to get together and talk in a f format where we could share that joy with other people. Uh, we found ourselves playing Final Fantasy XIV or whatever it was the other night into four in the morning, and just talking about the games we grew up with and uh, how they influenced us, not only as gamers, but as people. And that was really important to us. And I think that that sort of conversation is fun. That sort of talk, uh, it can be interesting as well. You can you might even be able to learn something if you're, if you're young. Once you get old, you stop learning something. But, uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, Definitely I mean, we day. talked about it. We said, man... We're not here to make money. We're not here to do any of that. We just want to do something fun, share it with the community, and see what happens. Uh, I, I have a feeling there. I'm sorry, dude. I cut you off. Oh, all the time. No. You're, you're just yeah, quiet. I mean, if people can get, like, if people can get enjoyment or, or a laugh out of this, of us, like, talking about whatever and making, you know, being ourselves that's cool like or even if it just distracts somebody listening to it while they're getting yeah. some work done yeah there are this really goes out to any gamer who's passionate about it but it's especially the 40 year old gamer who grew up if you grew up in the same place uh, in life that brian and i did and steve did uh, your parents wanted you to believe that gaming was never going to lead you anywhere. You were burning your brain cells and you're wasting your time. You should be doing something productive like learning a trade or playing a sport or something like that. That all true, like any gamer, any, any proper gamer who's not into sports, you're not going to sell them on sports, right? That's, I was, I'm not wired that way. I was trash as an athlete. I'm still trash as an athlete. And it, it, like Same. my folks tried to find a sport to shoehorn me into, yeah. uh, eventually landing on cross country and basketball. And I, I liked basketball. That wasn't good enough for varsity. And uh, cross country sucks because running sucks. But um, yeah, I ended up with a passion for non-aerobic skills or non-aerobic sports archery was a major like i shot competition recurve for like 10 15 years well, it's probably about 10 years maybe um and like junior high and stuff like that and before and that even to this day I, I still love it i don't shoot as much as i should but it's very quiet very zen um very peaceful yeah. like yeah running basketball try you know tried them not not stuff i'm, I'm good at or take enjoyment in no, I got a driver's license, so I don't have to run anymore. But my parents are always like, you need to spend more time outside. Go play outside. So I'd, Quite the go, out, so I'd go outside, and I'd sit under a tree with my Game Boy, and they'd be like, not like that. Just like, come back inside. You just don't want technology. Like, you just don't want electronics. That's Just say that instead. We're all of the age now where we could have kids of our own. Uh, none of the three of us do. <laughs> for a, what is certainly a slew of reasons 
uh, which will become clearer as time goes on, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're at an odd age, right, where gaming has become acceptable to the mainstream. Gaming has become something that we can all unite around, and it's not like a secret. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I was coming up, you had to kind of hide the fact that you were a gamer because that made you a loser and nobody wanted to talk to you. You don't you don't watch sports all the time. You play video games instead. And then they Even beat you high, up and you stuff you in a locker. School. Yeah, high uh, school. I, you're like they'd watch, you know, oh, you're coming out of the computer lab and it's yeah. So I had legit had friends tell me that they didn't want to be friends with me anymore cuz it was be friends with me or be friends with everyone else in the school. And they wanted to have more than one friend, so bye to me. Uh, the ignorance of... Um... Yeah, those people weren't their friends either. Yeah. No. No. Well, all that shit's manufactured. High school kids are just animals. Like, they just they just operate on instinct uh, and what they believe is, is what they should do. And, the... and what movies tell them that yeah, are, and I, I'm guilty of that too. Oh yeah, we absolutely. We all are. Fall into the well. I'm a nerd, so and I'm getting bullied a lot. So obviously, everyone at the high school hates me. When half the people in school probably didn't even know who I was or care. It's just you know a handful of people who bullied me, and then I stayed quiet. Yep. And well, then you associate well, you talk to people like, well, here's what happens when I talk to people. Yeah, it wasn't until college that I learned that. It becomes problematic, right? Because you you have these experiences, and this is, I mean, it's it. We're starting off on a rather somber note here, I suppose, <laughs> but uh, and it's relevant. It's relevant because I doubled down. Like, I was not allowed to be playing those games because it wasn't cool. And being cool mattered then. Do you remember when being cool mattered? Yeah. Being cool doesn't matter now. I'm wearing an antique-ass bowling shirt on my first stream here. This shirt has deep importance to me, which... Oh, well, that's the wrong side. I'm new at cameras. This shirt has deep importance to me. I'll be happy to explain it another time. Um... But I'm most comfortable in it, and it actually fits my fat ass now, which is great, because it was too large when I was in shape, and now I'm 40 and human paunch. So, you know, I, who cares? Who, you know, you want to know what else? I'm wearing, what is it, you know what I'm wearing? Check this out. Jeans? What do you got on? Sweatpants? I can't see. Yes. There we go. Yes. Gray heathered yep. sweatpants. I don't give a shit. My sweatpants hey, have zombies are... on them. They have zombie Einstein. That's Evil lingerie for people. men nowadays, right? It's been. It's always been lingerie for men. Fuck it. Like you just. <laughs> it's comfortable. You get to a point where you realize nobody else's opinion of you that you don't actually personally value. Those opinions don't matter. At least that's where I'm at with it. Uh. Uh, Dr. Seuss said, those who matter don't mind, and those who mind don't matter. I don't fully agree with him there, but yeah. I can see this it. Con uh, this is the context in which he's talking about, and I think he's right. You know? Uh-oh. Hello, Skippy. Is that, my, is that my man in upstate New York? Come to hang out with us? So now that we've gotten over the weird, like obviously latent problematic stuff that we've uh, we've had going on, we can talk a little bit more about the topic that we intended to. And I'm going to let y'all go first because I'll ramble for ever allowed to or if allowed to. So. Like I won't. Yeah, but like I'll tell you to shut up. <laughs> where the inverse is not necessarily true. Um, <laughs> just because you're too polite and I'm not. But let's talk about... 
your introduction to gaming. Steve, you can go, bro, if you want to. Well, I think I was maybe five or six years old. I went over to my grandmother's house, and uh, my older cousin was playing the Nintendo on the TV in the living room, and he'd hooked it up. And I was just fascinated. I'd never seen anything like it. I had no idea what he was even looking at. He was playing Rygar. And I was just like, what is this magical device? I mean, I didn't even know what the concept of video games was at that time. And uh, I was hooked instantly. And uh, he even... Uh, he sent me uh, recordings of him playing later, after, like over the next few months. He would just hook it up to the VCR while he played and mail me VHS tapes until I got one my own for Christmas that year. And I don't think I've stopped playing since. I only had Super Mario Brothers at the time, and I got to the point where I would just beat it from start to finish without warping like two or three times in a row because it was the only game I had, and I just obsessed over it. Probably the first thing I ever hyper fixated on. Yeah, I think that's probably true for a lot of us, like lifetimers. Yeah. But I, um, I'm um, oh, yeah, sorry. From then on, like every dollar I got for my allowance went to video games. Every single one. I wouldn't spend it on anything else. I just stuff it all away until I could buy one. Bought myself a Super Nintendo with like birthday money and like saved up from and Christmas money saved up for like like a year and a half. But uh, I can't remember a time in my life where I didn't have a console or a PC. Once I had a PC, too, just always had one. Always had video games. They've always been my go to for escapism and stress relief and make well make everything fucking bearable cuz you know sometimes this world can fucking suck yeah i definitely can agree with that i don't think uh, my own origin story is all that different uh we started playing Here, here's something about my parents okay i let me give you an idea my mother, if she's watching this, my mother forced me, and I won't go down this rabbit hole, but you need to hear about the hypocrisy. My mother forced me to be confirmed at church. Literally, six weeks later, I found out she's a practicing Wiccan. That dead air there was deliberate, okay? So wow. So let me tell you what else they did. And uh, to their credit, my, my folks worked their asses off to make sure we were always entertained. We always had what we wanted, especially my father doing 60, 70 hours a week, doing everything he could. Uh, they sat me down in front of an Atari 2600 when I was literally could not sit up well on my own. Like, they had to prop me up against the this uh, wicker... Ha uh, it was like a center table. It looked like a treasure chest, but it was just a big wicker thing, and they propped me up there, and I would play Joust on the Atari 2600, and that was the oldest gaming memory. I God damn it. That was the oldest gaming memory that I, I, I've had. I, um, and since then, it's been... It's been nonstop. It's it's just an important part of my life for infinite reasons. Uh, but I think one of the things that was the most exciting for you, I mean, for uh, about it when we were kids, is that it isn't a form of escape. You're gonna go to school. You may or may not get treated like crap. It may or may not be partially your own fault because of whatever you know, whatever you're doing wrong, or you're probably not doing anything wrong, but. You never know, I guess. Um, and you're going to come home, you're going to play games where you're a beast. 
Will you come home and speed run Mario and whoop your you whoop the you know the ass off the time you set a week ago and you know there's nobody in that school who can beat you? That's where you're. That's where. What is, what is the quote from Uncut Gems? That Adam Sandler says, "That's how I win. That's how I win." Emily says hi. Hi, Emily. She was just eating crabs. Lobster. Lobster. They're uh, water bugs. Alaskan king, but they uh. They, they feel, feel huge. huge. <laughs> Brian, your Brian, it's your turn. Oh, I'm up. Uh, first expo first raw exposure to video games was arcade cabinets. Um, and then. But that wasn't like a regular. It was like a couple of times with friends in like elementary school, we would get to go somewhere and play like a game room for a birthday party. Um, personal gaming. Uh, my dad used to travel a lot and go to trade shows for whatever industry he was in. And he came home after one trade show and handed me a console in a box. It was a Pong console. I connected it to the TV, and it's all downhill from there. Um, had. Atari 2600, two of them, because I burned one out for a very long time. Um, I used to have all the carts. Uh, so many memories on that. Indiana Jones is absolutely the worst game on that console, because I never played E.T. I don't want to. Uh, from there, I went to the NES, and then I got a Commodore 64. Actually, I got a Commodore 64 somewhere early on, too. Um, yeah, NES, other things. Then eventually, I got you know got into PC gaming. Um, First purchased PC, um, my mom worked at a retail store, and I, I, like, made a deal with them where, like, they would buy it for me with, like, mom's discount, and then I would pay them back, and it, it worked great. Um, that was the first, like, actual purchase PC. Um, it was um, IBM PS1 486SX with 4 megabytes of RAM. So I purchased that. Went to Electronics Boutique and said, here's my system. What games can I play? And the guy motioned to the shelf and said, anything you want. And I'm like, ooh. And it, and it went from there. I've been hooked on PC gaming forever. Um, a little bit of console stuff for some games. Uh, Metal Gear Solid series. Um, well, MGS5 was I played solely on PC. But um, it was pretty much like Gran Turismo and Metal Gear kept me at least playing consoles every year or other year. Um, I don't own anything past... Uh, Xbox 360. Um, but yeah, and uh, kind of, I don't know, I liked PC gaming, or I liked gaming, console or PC, and tabletop gaming. Uh, story for another day. I, I liked it more than really hanging out. Uh, parents would get us outside. I'd go ride my bikes with my friends, but like, I'd lose interest in that quick, and you know, my time on com on the computer was limited. Like I couldn't just sit there, but that's all I really wanted to do. Um, yeah, things like Legend. Look, we were just talking about this earlier. Off screen, Legend of Corandia uh, was a big one. Uh, Demon Gate, uh, Police Quest, all sorts of stuff like that, and it just blossomed from there. Um, first MMO excursion was ever Quest, aside from Muds. Uh, actually. First online games, technically BBS doors. I will play Legend of the Red Dragon all day. But uh, yeah, now here we are. Yeah, things uh, progressed, dude. I gotta tell you a quick. Uh, let me relate a quick funny story. I uh, was sitting on the couch with my father at one point, watching Saturday morning cartoons, which is a thing that used to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, even after the Looney Tunes era was largely over, there was still Saturday morning programming for kids to watch with their families. Yep. Uh, there was an old show called Captain N, which was Captain Nintendo. And do you remember that, anybody? Like, yep. uh, my fa we were watching that, and my father said to me, he says, you see how, this, how good this looks, this, this, this cartoon? I was like, yeah. It looks like a cartoon. Cartoons look amazing. And he's like, the games you play are going to look like that someday. What? And I was like, no. You're, dude, you're out of your mind. The 16-bit thing, 
That's the pinnacle of gaming. That's it. There's nothing, nothing more after that. The next really thing is Tron. The next thing is just Tron somehow. Yeah. That's my mindset as a child, and I make a point yeah. of showing him videos from like, like, oh look at this. This is a panoramic view of the of the base we built in Ark Survival Evolved, and he's like, where'd you build it? Like, in a game, like just showing him these graphics, and he's just like, it just blows his mind. Like, Dad, not only were you right, but it went way further than that. Yeah. Look at uh, Unreal Engine 5. Dude, that, that is intense, what they're doing with Unreal 5. Like, that engine is beautiful. Like, the like, photorealistic, almost. Yeah, it's at the point where you can't tell it between it and a photo at this point. That is what photorealism means. Yeah. I still remember when I saw a fucking Square Enix like preview for I forget which Final Fantasy game it was, but it was just a tech demo, and I was like, I can't tell, I can't tell this is oh, this is CGI. Might have been because that was a big deal when it came out. I remember that. That was that was interesting. I mean, the specific thing that I saw was just a tech demo that was never used for anything. Oh, okay, but. Alan, is that story true? Sounds like it. He says, my parents smuggled an Atari 2600 across international country lines <laughs> in Asia for me. That is so fucking metal, dude. Like, lucky, lucky that shit wasn't region locked. How much would that suck? Like, we can't use it. Did they even do that then? I, I don't know. I think I think the major... Uh, no, because it plugged directly into the TV. So I don't know if like the NTSC and PAL encoding even existed back then. That's a good question. It didn't. My dad bought, my dad is a programmer, and he used to travel to Japan a lot for work, sometimes months at a time, but he used to bring back, like, NES or Game Boy games for me sometimes, and they would just work just fine. I couldn't really understand what was going on. I couldn't read the manual, but it was cool as hell anyway. I'll keep playing with it, Alan. It, it, it's probably most likely that I can't get their volumes any higher on my end uh, which is what I'd prefer to do but uh, I can't we're, boost oh, we're soft uh, yeah you guys are way quieter than me for some reason and like yeah. I think I have you guys at 200 percent is our uh, is, is it feed audio from discord yeah it's it's using desktop okay. audio so actually I have some room to turn you guys up well I'm not Brian but um, input volume. I'm at 85%. Let me put my stuff up to 100. I'm at 100. I, also, I can go to I'm also, No, Steve, you're, no, Steve, you're fine. fine. Yeah, you're good. I'm I have... In a position where I, I was... I like trying to keep my voice low. I have, um, Steve, I had you at 85%. So you, I, on my end, I have room to adjust. I just don't for Brian. Yeah, I know it's I, important. I want to get everybody's mics on the same level. Yeah. I was surprised that I was quiet. So. No, it's fine. I do don't don't change a thing. But just. I I'll, did not. <laughs> I'll I'll adjust it on our end. Uh, it's also. There could be some losses or something because it's hosting through my stream, um, and receiving my audio directly, and it's getting right. you guys from desktop audio. I don't. I don't know enough about all this. We're still, it's still you know, like a work in progress. We're still it is learning. A it is, it is a, a <laughs> it is a psychote. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's going to get better every time, every week or so, hopefully. Um, I, I got to get used to looking at the camera. It's all the way up there. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't, it doesn't. Oh, maybe I'll put the camera over on this side. Cause that's where I'm keeping the stream and everything to see what's going on. And like well yeah I see I, I keep looking at turning to look at you I'm looking right at you on that screen and I'm looking off to the right see it, it's just this stuff takes time it takes time to get dialed in but I'll, put uh, a, I'll put my webcam on my forehead like when I was doing that mystery package and I'll just stream whatever my <laughs> are doing. I gotta stitch those together and put them up on YouTube because that was a blast I loved streaming that so you said something about your first foray into MMOs, and that's a 
that's a topic I'd love to save for another day, but yeah, uh, that got me thinking about mine too and how important that genre has become to me. Just like it, actually, it, it even has nothing to do with the games, right? It's like it's about what you do with them. Yeah. What are uh? Why don't we why don't we list off like two or three side interests like not well they could be gaming related but like that's a great I mean, idea. obvious we like gaming because we're we're here we're streaming talking about gaming like my i want to say my top three um top three side interests are uh like high strangeness um i love weird stuff um i'm not saying i subscribe to like a ton of like weird theories but i like stuff like that because it gets my brain going and lets me kind of daydream uh, about what if kind of stuff. Um, it was just very interesting. Um, that and cheese and like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I like that and cheese. Like that's, that's everybody love like, every, oh, like everybody loves like, cheese. I like I like really weird like out there stuff and like cheese and coffee. Space. I love space science things like that. Um, yeah, so those are a couple of my non-gaming interests. Science is definitely up there for me. I love reading about all the things that are possible and all the things that people are discovering. And it's just, it's always so interesting. Uh, also, I got into martial arts when I was like seven or eight. My parents signed me up and I was hooked. Uh, I even competed regionally for a little while uh, before I had the horse accident. Attack I haven't really, haven't really done it since, but can, can always want to get back into it. I just haven't been able to. That's how I am with archery. Um, I cannot wait to at some point, hopefully soon, get back into it and just take the bow out in the backyard and like put arrows into a target because it's. Stuff like that is very peaceful, and I did well. Like, I, I competed regionally, too, and it was like, I never thought as a kid or a preteen that I would be doing stuff like that. Here I am at, like, yeah. a New England tournament, and I'm like, wow, I shot at a tournament in yeah. Atlantic City. Like, it was ridiculously fun. Like, yeah, it sucked. We couldn't go onto the casino floor, so we were all under 21. Like, we had to go to the, like, kids' casino. We were, all, we were like, 16, 15. <laughs> Like, yeah, the kids' casino. It's like, okay, or something weird like that. There was, like, a designated area we could go. I'm going to shut up because I keep rambling. Yeah, there was a there was a tournament I went to, a regional one, and uh, they didn't have enough participants for the uh, teenage black belt division. So they bumped me and the only other participant up into the adult division. Holy cow. And uh, I was 16, and I ended up placing third in the adult division. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, That's I went. Cool. I, the guy who, the guy who took first, I ended up. He beat the ever-loving crap out of me <laughs> for one, but he was like, he was like twenty-eight, and he was like a twenty, an age twenty-eight version of myself. So I just did no chance. His, he was built like me, but uh, but bigger, a little bigger. You're fighting and, your future self. Like. Yeah, and his fighting style was was very similar to my own. He was just better at it. He was like a fifth degree black belt. I actually had to have my parents drive me home because I could not move my arms <laughs> after no. the fight. My left arm was completely dead. My right arm was dead all the way down to the elbow and I could only move, I, could, I had to hold it to my side and I could only move the lower part. <laughs> I was Did like, I cannot. Like did that stuff I, set in as it happened and you had to work through it or did that all hit afterwards? Like when you hit, were done and everything it, caught up? It hit once, like maybe five, ten minutes afterwards when everything okay. settled, once I stopped moving. I could feel it. It hurt during the fight. But then I, once everything was done, it all tightened up. Yeah. I'm almost maxed out on company seals and I got to start spending them. I just don't know on what, like, it's like cosmetics at this point. Pick up um, some cosmetics or gl dump glamour prisms on the yeah. market board. Oh, dark matter also sells on the market board. Yeah. 
So side interests involve um, cars, driving them, looking at them, wanting to have faster and more expensive ones and never being satisfied. Um, they're all, we're all playing Final Fantasy XIV. That's that's the that's the hotness right now. Raid Guild is still going in TBC, but it doesn't require more than a, a few days. Just a, just a few evenings, and you can get everything done. Uh, in, so interest of uh, weightlifting, not as much lately, but uh, cars, music. It's a, just a, such a milk toast answer, but uh, pretty much like everything that's not country. Speaking of milk toast, another dairy toast. Um, I forget what brand it is, but you can get uh, there's like pumpkin spice cinnamon swirl bread, and uh, so you toast that up and you put cream cheese on it, and that is fantastic. It's yummy. I like traveling too, but um, once you get gnarly ass agoraphobia you don't uh you don't travel as much as you as you'd like to uh, i used to travel to germany and uh oh my god gary i uh like it was so creepy like i'm like who are you and i have two black cats i'm like is this a riddle uh <laughs> what is happening we, you know, and instead of traveling to Munich and visiting the Nurburgring and topping out a 2.4 liter, I think it was, four-cylinder diesel Ford Edge on the unrestricted part of the Nurburgring, we're at 128 miles per hour. We don't do that traveling as much anymore. It's more, uh, I travel to stop and shop sometimes, sometimes, mostly just Instacart. I travel to take the dogs outside. Yeah, that's about the extent of it, extent of it for me right now. But yep. so travel, Same unfortunately, is on a, on the back burner for now, till we get that all sorted. But um, and cars too, actually. What's the point of having you know being passionate about something that's a vessel for escaping your house when you don't escape your house so much? Uh, I mean, I still follow the the news and stuff like that, but I've definitely shifted hard toward gaming and uh, that was randolph that's correct it was randy's it's not randy it's randy's german cousin uh randolph so that was uh i'll never forget that i'll tell that story another time gary but i'll never forget when they when i told them i wanted to drive it out of the park hotel the uh, hotel parking garage and they were like are you sure i'm like yeah i can handle it they're like most americans are not happy with that I'm like, i don't care i don't care I've driven in much worse situations, and then we get down there, and I was wrong. I super cared, because it's like, they get you down there, and it's a 45-degree incline. Dude, like, legitimately, it's this little-ass parking garage under the hotel, and you go up the incline toward, like, the street, and it is 45 degrees. So what do you see out of your windshield? The ceiling. That's it's, terrifying. It's super unnerving. Uh, bears, yeah, bears barbecue is really good. Uh, but yeah, that that covers the hobbies. Gaming's taking a front row seat for me because I can do it from here. I think I think we can keep things interesting between the so the MMOs we play, the other games we play together as a group. Con we continue to build on the group. We're still getting you know a couple new people in the guild or whatever here and there and. Maybe bring people into games they wouldn't normally try. Hint, hint. Final Fantasy XIV is the best MMO in the game in the world right now. Fight me about it. Signed, Good. signed, a 16-year WoW subscriber. Yep. And Just, former uh, former weeb hater. Oh, um, I'm still a weeb hater. <laughs> I'm still a weeb hater. I made my character look as unweeby as possible. Like, if. Uh... If you liked, if it's like, aside from WoW, uh, other games I can easily compare it to is Rift, because you can kind of play every class on one character. You don't need six characters to experience everything. Yeah, uh, 
I mean, they're a time sink, though. Make no mistake. Yeah. If you don't have the time, don't even try. Just oh, save you yourself can... the frustration. Because it's so story-driven, and so many of the features are gated behind the story, that if you don't have time to dedicate to it, to just getting the story knocked out, you're gonna. it's going to be a long time before you get to play with your friends. And that's probably one of the only things I would say is a negative. If Yeah, um, I mean nothing stopping like your friends from making another character and like leveling up with you. Um, but I, I wish it was, I wish you could like desync your level so you could go back and run, run content with your friends. Cause you know, once you go past it, it can be. Yeah. It would be nice if when you partied with someone, you could just level sync down to their level. Yeah. Retail. Wow. Does that. Retail. Wow. Does that poorly, but yes. yeah, I think it does it all right. I'm not as much. I'm not a retail hater. I only play classic because that's where all my buddies are at, and uh, I like buddies. Yeah. I like buddies. Oh. So, talking about our introductions to gaming and all that stuff. Uh, growing up, my favorite genre was role-playing games. Mm. I also had an affinity for fighting games, which I think was a weird combination of things. Like Street Fighter Two Turbo on the uh, SNES, I was a, dude. I was an animal. I would practice at home, and just and just clear it out a bunch of times. And then we'd go to Scooters, which was a local arcade, I think in Bristol. And I would just run that machine for like 40 minutes. Like grown men are coming over trying to trying to step up to to the 14 year old kid, and they're just getting served one after the other. Dude, I'm just eating all their money. It was awesome. <laughs> um, but. It was role playing games inv offer more to me. I, I, I hate the I, I hate weeb aesthetic, uh, but the Final Fantasy series has been important to me my whole life. It, Final the Final Fantasies four IV and six, which we actually got here in the states, uh, along with Chrono Trigger, are probably the three best RPGs of yep. that era. Yep. Honorable mention to Secret of Mana which was a different animal and you could actually play with three players um, more an action game, but I'm going to, I might replay that. There's a remastered version, but I don't know if it's any good. I heard mixed things about it. Yeah, me too. I don't want to be like Don Corleone. They massacred my boy. I don't want to play it and just be like, oh, what the fuck happened? Uh, I had that with Heroes 3, right? Heroes of Might and Magic 3. They did a, they did a remastered version. And it it's just, not, it's just not as good. It's just wrong. Like nothing, nothing's right about it. That's the most adequate description I can give you. When did I become Jesus? Uh, literally just now. Right this very minute. Uh, which one is that? The profile pic. The uh, is that the purple one from the? I think I use the same one on Twitch that I use on Twitter. The purple suit with Emily's hand showing the same, the matching nail polish. Yeah, that picture, that's that's just one of the... Jester, Abe says, Jester looking like the dude who played Raiden in Mortal Kombat. Like, that's you're not the first person to, to yeah. make that observation. Yeah, Christopher Lambert. Yeah. Nice, Abe. Holy cow. Steve looks like he was drawing. <laughs> dude, I... I, I not wrong. I experimented with some... Uh, some shenanigans for that position, some gifts and stuff, but I wanted to do the artist justice. It was important uh, to me to make sure that his his um, fine art met um, met the rest of the world. Uh, all done with the oh prime time pass for the house plot. Yeah. No oh, joy. Wait, is it bought yet? No. 
but you, it could be you... anywhere. I'm not there anymore, but it could be anywhere from. Oh, we need somebody now. There. It could be anywhere from now for another 12 hours at this point. I'll uh, there's a cash in the guild bank. I can put it in the guild bank. Oh, if you're still there, it will. Me, uh, I'll head over there. Dude, I'm just leaning into the Viking thing at this point. Like, fuck it. I'll turn around. Where is the teleport? Thing? Dude, it's long as shit. Look at this. Fucking, Making me miss mine. Fucking pain in my ass is what it is. I'm never going to grow it out again. So when it gets cut, it's gone. So... Is it Steve Ward 22? Actually, you know what? My first... My first RPG experience with a, with a game called Swords and Serpents on the NES and it was an all oh what a pain in the ass game that is. It's it's like uh I'm trying to remember the interface. You'd have your character's health along the bottom and then one half of the screen above was a map. The other half was like the bad guy's health or the or the message or whatever. It was like the system would use that space for whatever it needed. And you would move, you know, the map was literally just an arrow with lines and shit. And, like, it looked like it was drawn on an Atari. It was fucking brutal, dude. And the game was just, there's no rhyme or reason for the combat. You just press the attack button, whatever it was. And they're like, oh, you can aim your attacks if you hold up or down. But there's no graphic for the attack. So you don't know what the hell is actually happening. It's just like, is that doing anything, or are you just making me use both hands? Because I'd kind of like to be able to play this game with just one hand so I can start fashioning a noose with the other one. Uh, but then I, then I tried Final Fantasy, the first game, and it was like, yeah, I like this. Like, this I can do. And then I started playing with some other games, Dragon Warrior and all, all the other ones from back in the day. And like, yeah, I can play these games. And now we're looking at like... Oh my I, gosh, Willow was on the NES. Dude. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't remember Willow on NES. I had a, I had a, I had a lot of games and I, I just... But Willow was one of my favorite movies growing up. Still probably Absolutely one of my favorite is. movies. And so... Uh -oh. Do you have any more? I'm like, I'm like a hundred k short. Do you have any more money on you? Yep. I'll go grab. So. Okay. You got a. Oh yeah, I got to click out of the placard. I cannot wait for the new housing system. I uh. Thank you. All right. Let's see what we could do. Tag, you're it. <laughs> I don't have the keyboard. Hot flying key warriors. Yet. I never fucked. I never fucked with that. I'm trying it's to remember. Just... The key, uh, the keyboard commands are just uh, on the numpad by default. Oh, zero, okay. two, and four. Zero is enter. You just zero, 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 two, zero, four, zero. Oh, no kidding. There you go. That's, that's all you got to do. Two. Zero is select. Two is down, okay. and four is left. Uh, okay. Um. I see you guys are still actively playing games. Uh, I had to shut all my shit off because my whole my whole shit is hosting this. You guys are just tuning out, fuckers. Um, <laughs> can't even take a break. Can't even unplug the hey, IV. I'm, I'm trying to buy some land. <laughs> <trying to> <laughs> Steve can take a break. He tagged me in. I'm the one clicking on the sign now. Uh, Final Fantasy has the worst housing system. Oh yeah, that's a whole episode, it's, dude. We could it's do... getting redone in the in the new content in October. But until then, it's terrible. It's 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 so bad that I could describe it to you, and you'd think I was trolling. You'd be like, nah, nah. I'm gonna go get some ice for my shoulder. <laughs> so, best NES game, man. 
Yeah, the dra Dragon Warrior. Um, was do Dragon Flying Warrior. Warrior. So I'm gonna have to fucking look dra at that. Dragon Warrior was my first RPG, even before Final Fantasy. I remember I had I had a subscription to Nintendo Power, and it came with a fold out like pull out like strategy yep. guide, and I didn't own it yet. But I would sit and I would read that strategy guide and just plan how I would play the game when I finally got it. That's cool. And just it had so much information in it, I could basically sit and play the game in my imagination until I finally did get it. People like you are the worst in MMOs. Like you're gonna know everything about Endwalker before it even drops. Yes. Like I mean, like we are we're fundamentally a classic WoW guild, so I guess. <laughs> Um, you read the pull-out strategy you got Gary. Now that's funny. <laughs> yeah. My pull-out game is strong. Uh, that's great. Uh, use code <laughs> fat sad penis. Um, Star Tropics. Oh my god. That's right. I feel like that was cool though, man. Like it, that's a, that's something that you'll just never get. And and the, the whole point of this show, for, from my perspective, is to talk about the good and the bad parts of, of old school yeah. gaming because I think that that's a cool touch, right? Like it, there's a secret code in the instruction manual. You, that's that's awesome. But now you just gotta Google it. Just fucking Google. Yeah, there was no taking the manual upstairs and getting a uh, pan and dipping it in lemon juice to reveal it, which is... I had Star Tropics. I remember doing that shit. Yo. Original Fantasy Star. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Fantasy Star Online 2 is, I think, just... I read something about her. Star it popped up on my Steam queue, I think. I played all four of the original Fantasy Star games. No. I don't think I played the original. I remember playing the second, third, and fourth, and I think all three of those were on the Genesis. And I think the third one was the coolest one. This is something we were actually just talking about a couple days ago. Uh, in Fantasy Star 3, you would marry. Your character would choose between two women to pursue some royal relationship, uh, rela relationship with, and you'd make uh, an offspring, which is always a man for some reason. And then you would play the the middle of the game and then it would happen again so the the way the story would play out is that you were but when you beat the game you were playing the third generation of the family that you've you've been building up to um and you could tell they got lazy as shit because half the characters are cyborg are cyborgs so they never age it's like oh that's awful convenient <laughs> You got this brolic looking dude with black hair and the other one is some unfairly hot female robot with claws. Just like But like weird shit would happen even with those characters. There were there were storylines that if you played them a certain way, you'd find those cyborg characters all desiccated and fucked up, like missing an eye or something, like left in disrepair in a ruin somewhere, and it's like it's kind of dark, actually. But uh, Fantasy Star 4 was probably the best game uh, in the series. Just the most enjoyable. It had the most interesting combat. That's where you started to see combo abilities. You had to figure them out. Certain characters' abilities, if you queued them up with certain other characters' specific abilities, you would use like a like a combined attack where both characters would go and it would amplify their effects and everything and you just had to experiment and find what those moves were which is kind of cool uh, but i think fantasy star gets forgotten about because now it's just it's just kind of strange it's a weird game series uh my brother played it on dreamcast fantasy star online they get master system that's right a couple of them were on there. Oh, uh, the reason I told you about my parents' hypocrisy early was because, do you remember how I said that uh, 
they gave us everything we wanted gaming wise but you'll also remember how I said that they also said gaming was going to melt my brain yeah so that's that was the story we had every console everything up to the, up to the Sega Saturn by that time I was getting ready to move out on my own and PlayStation was out and I, I, I never had one of my own but we had every 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 console so I mean who bought a Sega Saturn these must have sold like five of those and we we bought we got one of them they had the longest loading times imaginable but it looked it looked great at the time like Panzer Dragoon I think was the pilot game ah. with that and there was uh we played we played some annoying as hell game I'm gonna look it up Somebody else talk. Uh, what was uh, Sega's, uh, Sega Systems? Let me see. I had Altered Beast because it came with the Genesis. And then there were some pretty bad games. Eternal Champions was terrible. Um, How about Golden Axe, though? Golden Axe was tight. I loved Golden Axe. It wasn't as good as the arcade cabinet, but it was close. Uh, Golden Axe was great. Uh, Electronic Arts of America, their carts had a little yellow tab on the side. Yep. And they did a couple of really good fighters. Like one was like Budokan, uh, which is a really good martial arts fighter with different weapons. It's like a tournament. Um, that's when I figured out you could open those up. And I'm like, oh, this tab comes off. Oh, now I can open the thing up with undoing the screw. I'm like, that was so. I've ruined a couple of games doing that because I thought I knew what I was doing. Um, Man, what what else did I have? Sonic obviously it was it was fun, but uh, Sonic was way the hell too easy. The, the oh, D and D arcade cabinet, you, Gary. There's two of them. Yeah, Tower of Terror and the other one. Um, the Sega Genesis version of Strider was good. I loved it. Actually, was that on? I know it was on Speaking. the NES. Speaking of the D and D arcade cabinet, there was one at the uh. Connecticut Golf Land, and I was determined to beat Gary Gygax's high score. Nice. And it really wasn't his high score. They just put the names of D and D developers in the pre-made high score list. But I put so many quarters in there trying to learn that game so that I could beat Gary Gygax. You got got bozo. Yeah. Sticks to snakes. Sticks to snakes. Little snakes come flying out of your hand. Yeah, that was a fun game. Cleric was the best thing to play if you were doing. Cleric was great. Thing if you were just playing single player by yourself and I, didn't I have, have anyone else to play with. An emulator somewhere. They're on the Xbox too. They released. Oh, seriously? They, they re-released them. They're, oh, uh, then I'll I'll pick them up on my uh, on my Xbox account because I can just play uh, them on the. PC I don't know if they're on, I don't know if they're on uh, if they're on PlayStation, but I know they were on they were on the Xbox 360. Um, the game I was talking about before that my father picked up and it was fucking terrible was The Horde. It was a game on uh, Sega Saturn. It came out on 3DO. It came out for MS-DOS. Uh, it was an action strategy style video game. Sort of Vermillion. I'll get back to that in a second. Oh, um, man. Oof. It was, it, um, it was so bad and so cringeworthy that they had Kirk Cameron in it. Like, I don't think I need to say more at this point. Like, if you know who I am, you'll know that I'm not I'm not likely to be a big fan of Kirk Cameron. Nothing against the man, but... He's, uh... Flashback. It was, flashback was cutting edge on the SNES. I... Dude, flashbacks... Physics. That animation style was yeah. so good. That it was the same. It was the same basic animation style they used in what the hell is the name of that game? Uh, out of this, out of this world. But yes. flashback looked so much better, and it just felt so fluid. Everything in flashback was like flashback was a pioneer, and it get, doesn't get enough credit, I don't think. I think we had flashback on Genesis, but it's the same fucking game. Sort of Vermillion was fun, but it, and we had that one, but it, dude, it was such a grind. It was just grind, 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 grind. 
You ever, guys ever play any of those 16-bit uh, strategy games like uh, Gemfire, Master of Monsters? Master oh, Ma of Monsters. No, Man those are that's those are some games I missed. Master of Monsters was the one where you could combine like monsters in like a DNA vat or something, wasn't it? Or was it well, you would something else? Uh, you know, you're kind of right. Oh God, Gary just dropping, just dropping the. The truth. Shining Forces. Mm -hmm. Sh Shining Force 1. Well, the first Shining Force game was technically uh, the uh, more standard RPG called Shining in the Darkness. I and... think they put uh, Shining Force or Shining in the Darkness is up. Uh, you can get it for free off the Android store. Uh, like yeah, that was Final Fantasy Tactics before Final Fantasy Tactics. Yes. Yeah, Shining Force is not RTS. Shining Force was... Uh, Fully turn-based characters had their own progression and gear. So, um, Shining Force was it's, easier. Shining yeah, Force was... I always thought, modern day to Shining Force is Fire Emblem. I think Shining Force uh, was an easier game than Tactics. Tactics would punish you, because if you did the shit that I used to do, where you stay behind and you level and you level and you level so that you're strong, the, your enemies just level with you. So you get up to the, you can get to level two or three and they have summoners and shit. And you're like, what? No chance. Like, I, I ruined my save file. The original Fallout games were like that, too. They were RPGs in that same vein, turn-based, uh, isometric camera, and those were awesome. Loved those. Streets of Rage, dude. Yeah. Street, Streets of Rage was intense. Hagger. Mayor Mike Hagger. I, I'd vote for that guy. I would, too. He looks well, like, he would, like break you in half. He like... looks like yoked-ass Tom Selleck. He does. With Tom Selleck with a ten pack. No, he was Final Fight, but Hagar was in other. He crossed yeah. over into into a number of other games. Oh, like, that's right. It was Final Fight. Yeah. Dragon's Breath. Breath of Fire, hmm. Abe. I think I think you're thinking Breath of Fire. Yeah, Breath of Fire was pretty cool. They had a cool story and stuff too. If you if your game is a shitty story, like your RPG is a shitty story, there's. I think it was Breath of Fire. As the game went on, you would evolve to be able to get like stronger and stronger. Transforms and at the end of the game, you transform into some big monster ass dragon, and you just breathe apocalypse juice all over everybody, and <laughs> and they all New guild die. Name. New guild name. Apocalypse, apocalypse juice. juice. Apocalypse. I was going to say yeah. ap apocalypse sauce, but that sounds awful. That was that was always fun because it actually lets you be you cool and just destroy enemies. They didn't have to be unnecessarily punishingly hard. Yeah. Which was the thing that a lot of older games did in order to lengthen them. They just made them ridiculously difficult. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yep. A stupid swimming area. Oh, I'm, oh, look at our little splash thing. That's great. Oh. Great Odin's Raven. It's <laughs> the it's, it's the new it team assemble. Thanks for assembling, whoever that was. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh I, I go back and forth sometimes because some of my best memories are from. Uh, oh, you, talk, you want to talk about Rygar? So you can get Steve all excited. Uh, Good game, overall. <laughs> Gary, fuck underwater levels in general. Yeah, Water I don't... Temple and Ocarina of Time. The entire ocean and Ark Survival Evolved. NES Silent Service was an awesome like NES submarine simulator game. No, this is fun, away. man. Like, I mean, you guys are talking in chat about the these fucking sick games, and luckily I got everything I wanted somehow with that thing that was gonna rot my brain, and I played a shit ton of games. 
Uh, a lot of times just rentals, too. I don't know how often you, you guys would get rental games, but my father would frequently... Uh, I should learn to multitask better. Um, would frequently bring us to Blockbuster or whatever, and we'd rent a couple games for the weekend, and you get to sample everything. Eventually, you're getting to a point where it's like, I've tried everything but the Madden, and it's like... I don't know if I want to try the Madden. I had a... The only sports game I... No, that's not true. You guys play any sports games? I had a Little League Baseball on the NES. And then I, I had... Techno Ball. Did you? Yeah, it's at the Stable. Techno Ball. And on, on the Sega Genesis, uh, Cyber Ball. Your, your football team was made up of robots. Dude, I played Mutant League Football. On the so on the Sega Genesis, that was fun, and it was like super violent for the time. Just <laughs> like, oh, this yep. guy's stats are reduced because his arm came off. <laughs> Blades of Steel. Yes, we sports we sports count. Uh, <laughs> there was my favorite dude of all time: SNES, NBA Jam. NBA Jam. I would always play as Bill Clinton because that was an option. <laughs> NBA Jam was actually just a dope game. It was just fun. You don't have to know shit about basketball. Just do abuse. Just beat up the other guy. <laughs> just, just break. There's no fouls. I mean, literally hit him. Hit him in the head with a bat. It doesn't matter. Take the ball and then throw it so much was... that it ends up on fire and you win. There was a Saturday morning cartoon. Of Mutant League football. I did not know that. <laughs> I'm going to have to go find that. Uh, I'm sure GW has, has shut down that. On like intellectual property right violations. Because like they're like. You can't have monsters playing football. We thought of that first. Like I love you GW. But. No. Oh, fucking Mutant, Mutant League hockey was good too. I basically like the sports games. That don't play like sports. I was I was big on like the NHL series. Me and one of my buddies in junior high, like NHL, like whatever, like ninety three or eighty five, like the the NHL games on uh, on the Genesis were fun because like oh the Hartford Whalers, like hey the home team, yeah they were those were good. I literally chose my favorite athletes based on that, like. Play NBA Jam. What team do I win the most with? It was usually um, whatever team Alonzo Mourning was on at the time. He wasn't on the Heat yet. I think he had they had a blue jersey, a light blue jersey, but that was a long ass time ago. This fights were good. There was a whole fighting mini game in Blades of Steel. That's right. Like a quick time. You guys were talking a little bit about it was Hornets, yeah. Um, you guys were talking about old ass games that got you into gaming in general. Like, and I didn't have a PC till I was a grown ass man. Um, so it was consoles for me up until the PlayStation era. Uh, it was the Charlotte Hornets with Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy, Muggsy Bogues. The guy who was like a midget. Uh, uh, I should probably shouldn't say that word. The guy who is a dwarf, basically, he looks like one, but in reality, he's like five foot ten. And like, it just shows you how big all the other yeah, players yeah, yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that guy's my size. You're like, like that guy are... looks like Vern Troyer. I'm like, dude, he's taller than me. <laughs> like, no, he's not. He's not short. He's just short on the uh, on the on the court. Uh, so I was always really interested when you guys were talking about your Sierra Games experiences. I never had those. Yeah. King's Quest and all that stuff. They did a port of one of the King's Quest games to Genesis, and it just gave me nightmares. I what? can't imagine that game would port very well. It's, it's so dependent on a mouse interface, for starters. That's the attacking. Or a keyboard. Or a keyboard. Depending on how old school you're going. I don't want to stop clicking on the housing sign because that means I might not get the house. 
Skylanders. This is one I have not played. I, I always wanted to, but I did not. You guys like Act Razor? Holy cow. Yeah. I was really disappointed when they made the second one and they took out all the city building. I'm like, that was the part I played the game for. Now you it's just a generic side scrolling action game. Populous on the Genesis. I used to play that a lot. I know. Like you're talking about Act Razor. I'm talking about like Populous. <laughs> Apples and oranges. Hey, 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 I read that out and it just made me laugh. <laughs> Just picturing it, it's like dunk on him. I bet, I bet Muggsy could dunk. <laughs> There's a fighter who used to be in the UFC. His name's John Dodson, and I think he's five foot four, and he can dunk. He's properly five foot four is a relatively short man, and he. Uh, Yeah, he can he can get it. I I'm six foot three. I can't dunk. Fuck that. Box adventure, little caveman guy. Holy cow, dude! Caveman games. That I had that on the Commodore sixty four. Dude, talking about a game that would be problematic in today's in today's climate. One of the events is the mate toss. Oh, that's right. You legit just grab your wife by her fucking ankles and spin her around. Spin around and like just a hammer how, toss. See how far you can yeet her. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to try that. <laughs> right now? You want to ask me something? No. What? No. Are we looking at me? Yes. He's, ninja. Ninja. He's wondering how no. far I can yeet you. I referred to? I'm thinking about yeeting you. Don't. Yeet. Like a caveman. Because there's a game on NES called Caveman Games, and it's like one of those California games, Olympic events bullshit. And one of the events is the mate toss, where you grab your mate by the feet and just spin her around and see how far you can yeet her. No. Cave mate. I'm not going to do this, but I was just talking about how problematic that would be now. It's prob It was probably problematic then, but... You, you keep talking about it, Emmy's going to do it to you. Yeah, she, she can toss her mate. She cannot toss me. That's why I eat all these M&Ms. <laughs> Increase your mass so gravity has much more effect on you, making you harder to throw. Yeah, it's... It's... It's science. Dude, I'm so hungry. Fucking hell. I'm so excited to come talk to everybody, and, uh... I forgot That's when to. your stomach starts acting up, and it's like, hey. I forgot to. I have a tab get... open for some band called Eskimo Callboy. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. People show Eskimo... me things, man. It's bizarre. <laughs> Callboy. Gary, you go to every state fair and eat garbage food. But I did recently tell the story about fried butter. I feel like I ascended a level of obesity and <laughs> took five years off my life just attempting such a feat. That said, I highly recommend it. Fried butter was delicious. Dude. I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised we have this many people tuning in. Like, well, I posted it on Facebook and everything to get our friends in. Yeah, fried mm -hmm. butter. But it's it's not what you think. It's basically a puff pastry okay. that they put a little bit of butter in, so when they flash fry it, ah. it's just you just get this little like little buttery magma on the inside. So it's like a it's like a buttery Danish almost. Yeah. So there is there is butter in there, but it's like meant to it's it's melted. It's not when they told me they served fried butter, I literally imagined a stick of butter yeah, battered breaded and fried. and fried. But yep. no, it's just it's That's... just a little puff pastry about yay big and they pump butter into it and then they deep fry it. And then idiots like me eat it. That's straight what I had pictured too, so you're you not alone. It. Well, it's really best if you roll that butter 
Take the take the butter stick, get it nice and cold, maybe even frozen. Roll it around in brown sugar and cinnamon. And then bread it. And then deep fry it. Gary, you're not supposed to eat it when it's still magma. What temperature did you think it was going to be? The girl at the, that I got mine from gave me like four warnings. Like, hey, by the way, that's liquid hot magma butter in there. So don't hurt yourself and sue. It's good stuff, man. It tastes good. Don't eat it a lot. I want you. Guys, I want everyone to be alive. For you were not warned. Oh yeah, no, that's you should have been warned. It's hot. It's hot as fuck. I mean, don't eat that a lot because you'll die. You'll die of being disgusting. But <laughs> where are you at? Where you can't get fried butter? You must not be in the States. You can probably get fried butter at a Cumberland Farms at this point. I would not. Like, fresh off the roller grill? Like the hot <laughs> roller grill? <laughs> they got fried butter on the fucking rollers. Speaking of terrible food, like, one of my favorite terrible foods is microwaved hot dogs. Like, they're so awful, but they're, they taste not good for you, and they're so yummy. I... Spent too much time being poor and eating like the like pack twenty four pack for mm -hmm. like ninety nine cent hot dogs. Absolutely, like when and... I go buy hot dogs for the microwave, it's the cheap, the literal cheapest, weirdest off brand I can get. And now when I go to eat eat them, my stomach is just like absolutely not. We're not doing this anymore. Is Dark Rose someone we know personally? Yeah. That's my friend Jill. Oh, oh. okay. Cool. Hello, friend Jill. That makes sense. There's some context, like... So... In terms of gaming... I had a thought. But then, proof positive that we're ancient. I don't know what it was. I was like, what game was I thinking about? Seeing what's still open on Grubhub. The what's still open roulette. I had a story to tell, that's what it was. Far ass hot dogs, absolutely. That, you, that's the good brand. Ugh. Oh, you know what you... Denny's. I now know you exist, which means combined... We have sufficient knowledge to scientifically confirm that one another exists. Or something, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yes, we're talking about the extra mild hot dogs. That's what they called them, by the way, in case you weren't, if you didn't remember. Extra mild hot dogs. Extra mild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you go to Stop and Shop, it's eight bucks <laughs> for 30 hot dogs. And they were extra mild. And we had one of those in the fridge at the Red House. Oof. And we were having a party. And Jay Barrett, that's right, full first and last name, because if somebody comes to find you for this, you deserve it. <laughs> Jay Barrett decided it would be a great idea to get a huge pot of water, boil the shit out of it, and just dump all 30 in there, and he literally was just posted up there showing everybody his dick soup. It's just <laughs> it's just this giant vat of horrendous split boiled hot dogs bobbing Oof. and floating on their own. And he's just sitting there giggling like, huh, 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 dick soup. You want some of my dick soup? No, Jay. We buy those because we have to. We we buy these because we have to. Nobody buys extra mild hot dogs because they're because they have refined tastes. <laughs> like you, I bought dog. these because I'm broke. Right. Uh, the, speaking uh, of completely inappropriate things in cooking, there was a time we were over Jester's and he was making hamburger helper oh and oh it came with this. 
it came with this added sauce and he puts it on top and it's this thick white creamy sauce and without thinking i just walk over i'm like yeah just just cooking with love and then he <laughs> points out that his i didn't even know they were there that his My parents, parents like in the tv room <laughs> literally in the next room over watching tv and i'm just like turning bright red like oops, oops. <laughs> they didn't mind like, i think they, yeah, they knew they, like we they, had our, our yeah, humor but like we were i mean we were in our early I was in my early 20s at that point, yeah. you know, it's not like we were 15, <laughs> so, but still. Say hello, Kermit. Yes. Every stream needs some adorable pets. You can also tell everybody about the time you made Adobe Helper. Oh God! Adobo we, helper. I you made. Know, yeah, that's Adobo what I meant. Helper. Actually, we didn't have any hamburger helper, so I was like, I'll just put this in the skillet and cook it up with some adobo and some other spices. Except I didn't realize that adobo had salt in it already, and so I also salted it. And well, you can guess how it came out. It was not good. I remember I got like back to video games there was a winter like we got snowed in like back in the day and that was at my buddy's apartment up above main street and uh he had just gotten turok for the n64 and we were like snowed in there for days and we just we played turok it was like the perfect timing and i was i was pretty blown away by turok on the n64 that was an amazing Dude, I I played some of those Turok games after. Do you remember any of those? Like the Rage that was Wars the only games? One I they were like split screen like Goldeneye, but they got you got all these bizarre ass guns and stuff like that and weird weapons. So it actually played kind of like like a proto Unreal Tournament. Interesting. Dude, that game was fun. We played that in the, I have uh, that installed right now. The which two, which the, one? The two thousand and three era. Oh the original the Unreal Tournament. Yeah. Yeah. The flat cannon is so iconic. So good. Bro, I Gary, I feel like the name Black Cat Daddy is just really unfortunate. <laughs> like, Actually, when we're playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh no, you need to play this with us, Gary. You can make you can make a pretty little girl who is basically you could make your cats as characters. Characters. Plus, we also need someone to click on the housing placard. So that's actually what happens. That's when, our main goal for recruiting people. When you join the free company, the <laughs> your first duty rotation is to you click don't become on the a full placard. member until you spent three hours <laughs> clicking. <laughs> then you can, uh, Gary. We play so many games. You can come play any of them. Anybody hearing this can come play any of them. Wow, classic. Well. Not WoW Classic. I actually want to tell you a quick funny story about that. Uh, classic TBC. I, I understand that. MMOs take time. When TBC released, they kept open the Classic Forever servers. I found one. I found one that was low, listed as very low pop. And... I wanted to see what that really meant because according to the website metric I was using, it said there were like six accounts active on the server. And I'm like, that's wild, right? So I logged into it, made a character on Horde side. I did slash who one to 60. I was the only player. <laughs> the whole server just, it was just my level one who had some stupid name. What the hell did I name him? I was Zill was was fat cock. That was him. I forget what mine was, but uh, so I went to Alliance, deleted the horde, did the same thing. Same thing happened. I was literally the only player on that server. Period. Just 
you have a WoW server to your like an official WoW server to yourself. You can only go so far. Like, like, oh, that, that's it. I got, a, I got a dungeon quest to do. Guess that. End. Doing, Guess that's, that's that. the end of this. <laughs> yeah, MMOs do not thrive <laughs> as a solo experience. You just post stuff on the auction house just for dirt cheap and be like, oh my god, look how cheap this is. I'm gonna buy it. Like, <laughs> you, could instant... actually, you could use the auction house as like a bank. You could. You, you totally could. That's so bizarre. Uh, can't believe I'm doing this. You guys can see where I'm ordering from. You ready? Hold on. Oh, I want to share something with you guys watching the stream now. We were, we're probably going to cut it off at about an hour and 30, so another 10 minutes or so. Uh, but I want to yeah, share something. Is, this is with... sort of like episode one intro and, and making sure everything works. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I spent, uh, if... I don't know if it's a little amount or a lot of an, a long amount of work getting this stupid interface set up for the stream today. Um, because I had to figure out how to stream Brian's camera through my stream. Do you know how you have to do it? Do you guys know? It is chat? interesting. It is very archaic. It's well, way more. Brain. No, it is. It's way more archaic than you would think. So what's actually happening here is where you see Brian on camera is actually on my second monitor. I have to get a screen cap of my second monitor and crop it. So he's he's streaming in Discord. And, and I that's had where to, he's pulling the feed from. And that's where the like feed's little from. bounding box and that's what it that's the section of the screen it looks at. It's so, pretty interesting, but so I I guess it's good I have a picture it. because you don't have three monitors. <laughs> no, I could it, I could still make it work. Um, I would just have two feeds of the same monitor and and uh, crop them differently. But look, let's see what my night might bring me. Uh, see if this works. Drag my browser over. You're getting mm. McDonald's, dude. I'm so jealous. It's nine thirty. It might be worth the the fifteen minute drive to the closest one. Oh. No, Abe. Steve doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a camera yet. So as I to I called it a poverty tax. I said since you're poor and you don't have a camera. <laughs> but so far, he's the only one of us that's actually created content. Like <laughs> that's true. He is. A... <laughs> that there you go. Yeah, it, yeah. It is rarely worth it. I just gotta scroll through McDonald's menu and find something I can eat. That's not gluttony as fuck. It's probably just gonna be every French fry they have. Sir, I'm worried what what you heard just, was give me a lot of French fries. What I said was I mean give me every them, French you fry, have fry you have. 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 Without buns. Be like just I want a Big Mac or a double quarter pounder. I want three the, Big Macs it, in a salad bowl. Yeah. Put Don't it in the fucking put buns thing. in it. <laughs> uh yeah, I, I don't know. I could take the nuggets and just skin them. Oh god! Ugh. Ugh. It look like it look like gross erasers. They they it, yeah, they already do. I could just get the burger and pull the bun off myself, I suppose. Are they any good then? I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to find. Okay, so we have six minutes to go. In the, in the 90 minute section. Actually, we hadn't decided if it was going to be an hour or 90 minutes. I uh, wanted to see how things would progress. And I, we're planning on doing it every Saturday or at least every weekend at some point. Um, and things really picked up here when chat started talking and we had some people to talk with and yeah. it, it fed us basically. To eat skinless nuggets. No, it looked no. like waterlog nut sacks. <laughs> So, you know, that's the content I'm here for, man. Like, uh, so some parting thoughts. I really appreciate you guys coming out to you hang out. It's been, for me, it's been, it's been fun. And for the other guys, I hope it's been the same. And for you guys, too. 
you guys are basically creating the shit at this point. For, like, we would come in with an agenda and have a stuff we want to talk about, but then we'd be done 20, by, 20, 25 minutes in, and now it's just having a conversation with chat. So, yeah. That, and I actually really like that format. Like, and I want to keep doing that. That's fun. Um, Bring some games and stuff at some point. Like, I, I said a Heroes of Might and Magic would be great because we could we could all play it, and it's you know it's a low brain low brain power game at times because it's hot seat, and then uh, yeah, so I we can I'm, easily chat. I think if we're doing it over the internet, I think we can each take ter- our own individual turns. Oh my gosh! Like, like Civ. Yep. Oh, and then once everyone's done, it processes and executes everything, kind of thing. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah, I'll be around, Abe. I'll, I'll throw up another another shout out next week when the when the time comes. We'll get some of the shit polished up a little bit better. Uh, you know, it's gonna be a a learning thing, like work yeah. in progress. Just a bunch of old dudes trying to figure this shit out. Art of Michael LaVoy, I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I will ensure, personally ensure, you get every penny you spent on this. Don't say that. Then he's going to do something obnoxious like gift a sub. <laughs> like, no, don't do that. Please don't do that. I can go hit him. <laughs> I like that. You can do that. Just make it gentle, playful. Don't like Dude, don't uppercut him into Bolivian or anything like that. Oh, I really want a crispy chicken sandwich, but I shouldn't. There's only like two good places for two places you should get a chicken sandwich from all three. I mean Chicken sandwiches are good. Oh hey, you, oh no, I was it's got it's breaded. I was gonna say you'll get a KFC double down, but those are breaded fried chicken breasts over bacon and cheese. Yeah, that's so that I mean, that, that see is if they delicious. Have, see if they offer that in a grilled format. I've eaten one of those, and I literally I think I would die if I ever ate a second one. It's not like, that bad, dude. That's... Dude, it was so heavy. <laughs> like, oh, it's super tasty. It's very heavy. All right, so don't, don't I was gonna Gary, I was gonna haul off and KO him. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, thanks everybody for coming out. Yeah, um, it was fun. This Definitely is the kind of shit we do all the time. We just do this for in regular, like regularly in Discord. Um, We're like this all the time. Yeah, pretty much. We just Mikey decided, hey, let's uh, let's do this. Let's, okay. let's record it and let other people enjoy it too. Yeah, and the I I think moving forward, it's speaking freely about it, the audience audience quote unquote the stream chat participation is really gonna make it. I think that's I think that's really gonna be the be you know the most yeah because because a lot of a lot of people are gonna do this like a podcast or whatever, and it's going to be more of a narrative thing where I prefer the interaction. I I cannot. And I've been doing a lot of homework on this stuff, and I can't get my mind around the concept of having a stream running for like 500 people or or more, and knowing none of them. Just they're all chatting, and you're just you're just like, fucking around playing a video game. It's bizarre. It's, it's weird. It feels disconnected to me, and uh, I, I definitely think definitely willing to give it a try and like see, like, oh, this isn't that bad. You gotta bring you. Gotta, you just gotta bring chat into it. You gotta you gotta yeah. make them a part of it because they're, they're, they're. I mean, that's that bar there. Those are the folks making it happen. Steve's the eight-year-old sketch artist versus attempt drawing. You guys, uh, <laughs> as a police sketch artist, yeah. Yeah, as a bonus for sticking around, I'm gonna show you what I was gonna do for Steve's picture. Uh oh. Oh yeah, it's it's something. Give me a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, this housing. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> I was gonna have it gift the whole time. 
that's like a 10 year old at least that's at least a 10 year old gif i pulled off of a freshly recovered hard drive last night <laughs> dude because it's hilarious look at that you that gif two... has been sitting unanimated like in binary format and then i <laughs> now it gets to see the world again i could be honest it was probably better that way yeah. No, this is pack super... that shit away like the fucking Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. I feel like uh, I feel like that Michael Rappaport uh, with the weird cat. Have you seen that video? Yeah. Blink, My... blink, motherfucker. <laughs> blink, motherfucker. That's what. It... Oh yeah, <laughs> Alan. Yeah, no, it's. I think I think for the intro we we used his bitmap there. But I think moving forward, it's just going to be stupid gifts until he gets a camera. Like, you might have to watch that for 90 minutes. Or, or even if he never gets a camera, someone can be like, hey, use this gif. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can have stream choose. We can have chat choose the gif for Steve next week. As a matter of fact, there's still six of you. <laughs> Unsubscribed. Uh... <laughs> Alan, I like to think it's mashed potatoes. That makes me yeah. happiest. That person There's, is just mashed. Ma it's, I, it's not mayonnaise. I know that for a fact because my brain will not acknowledge that if it's mayonnaise. Like that's mayonnaise. No, no, mayonnaise doesn't move like that. Mayonnaise is. Yeah, it's it looks like jiggly. it looks like frosting or something. Oh no, I see the fluff thing. That I could see... definitely be fluff. Wait, wait till you... I feel like there's not enough head. Like, there, th that person's head is so small. Well, he's eating it. <laughs> he's not, though. Oh, it's fucking hypnotic. Um, <laughs> let's see. I guess I'll be taking gift suggestions up until next uh, next time. You can DM me on Discord or Twitter or whatever, and uh... you get to you get to pick a Steve. All right, folks, I'm shutting down. We're still going to be good. hanging out in Discord. Thanks for coming yeah, out. Good, good fun. We're going to keep doing it, I think. I think I speak for all three of us. Um, I had fun. I think they had fun. And hopefully y'all did to, too. Fun to chat, engage, and like just, you know, do something aside from just play video games. Like, <laughs> good fun. Definitely. Uh, DM me on Facebook or something if you want to just come hang out in Discord. That's That's an option, too. God damn it, that gift.